please be seated. On behalf of Fitchburg State University, welcome to the 122nd commencement exercises. It is my honor to serve as your master of ceremonies. Including the graduate and undergraduate degrees we present tonight, over 1,200 new graduates of Fitchburg State have been recognized during the year. The commencement ceremony combines traditions unique to Fitchburg State University and rituals common to colleges and universities across the United States. At every Fitchburg State commencement, the university's colors, green, white, and gold, are prominent. Each color was chosen to signify an ideal. White symbolizes purity and perfection, green is inspiration, Gold represents wisdom. The undergraduates who have earned the distinction of graduating with academic honors wear ribboned medallions. Those graduating summa cum laude will be wearing honors medallions with green and white ribbons. Those who are graduating magna cum laude have medallions with gold ribbons. The cum laude graduates have green ribbons on their medallions. Students who complete the Fitchburg State University Honors Program write and orally present a senior thesis, wear green and gold cords with their medallions. The Starlight Scholars wear red cords, and you will notice other students adorned with cords representing various academic societies, as well as students wearing stoles representing various groups and organizations. Other university symbols include the saxifrage flower. In 1900, the saxifrage, known as the rock breaker, was chosen to represent the spirit of what was then Fitchburg Normal School. The flower was chosen for its moral lesson in the achievements that can be brought about by quiet willpower. The motto, perseverantia, meaning perseverance or persistence, has remained unchanged for a century and is prominent in our seal. While the university colors and saxifrage are unique to Fitchburg State, other traditions are common to graduations across the United States. Most significant of these are the academic regalia worn by all participants. The origins of academic regalia can be traced back to the 13th century. At that time, they were the daily attire. Today, they are only worn for ceremonies, but they tell us much about the wearer. Students receiving degrees tonight wear traditional black gowns. For undergraduates, the gown has long pointed sleeves. The graduate students wear traditional black gowns with oblong sleeves open at the wrist with the front part cut in an arc. They will be carrying their hoods until conferral of their degrees. All faculty and administrators wear the gowns associated with the university where they earned their degree. Faculty may be wearing black, red, maroon, or blue gowns today. The hood, which is the colorful part of the regalia worn around the neck, indicates the wearer's degree and the place of study. Each hood is lined with the official colors of the university or college awarding the degree. The binding identifies the graduate's academic discipline. The length of the hood and the width of the binding increase with the importance of the degree. Each member of the processional also wears a mortarboard or a soft hat with a tassel. Doctoral hats have gold tassels, master's degrees have black tassels, and undergraduate tassels feature the university colors. Watch for these distinctions as the processional begins. Several of the groups participating in the processional today will be led by a gonfalonier. The gonfalonier carries the banner, or gonfalon, representing that particular assembly. The gonfalon is a long banner that is suspended from a crossbar, and it originated in the medieval republics of Italy as an ensign of state or office. Gonfalons have been adopted by many universities around the world as college or institutional insignias. As we prepare to welcome the university processional for the start of our ceremony, please note that during the commencement ceremony, access to the stage will be prohibited. 
The Fitchburg State University Alumni Association has hired a professional photographer who will take a picture of each graduate as they receive their degree and congratulations from President Lapidus. Each graduate will receive a complimentary five by seven photograph mailed to their home along with information on how to order additional prints. The ceremony is also being streamed live tonight by Fitchburg Access Television and is captioned for the deaf and hard of hearing. DVDs and Blu-rays of the ceremony will be available for purchase from FATV. Please note that captioning for this event is available on your mobile device through our website at fitchburgstate.edu slash captioning. In the unlikely event that it becomes necessary to evacuate the building, there are five exits around the perimeter of this room. And now, please rise to welcome the Fitchburg State University Processional for the 2018 Winter Commencement. First to enter are the alumni. The alumni are forming a gauntlet to prepare a corridor for the procession. The faculty are led by the recipients of the university's four prestigious faculty awards. Dr. Elizabeth Walsh, recipient of the 2018 Vincent J. Merrill Award for Excellence in Teaching, is carrying the university mace, which is a symbol typically found at academic ceremonies. Also leading the faculty is Dr. Megan Krell, the 2018 recipient of the Faculty Award for Service, and Dr. John Hancock, the 2018 recipient of the Contributions to the Graduate Program Award. All of the Faculty Award winners are wearing stoles that commemorate their accolades. and undergraduate students are now entering, organized by the four academic divisions within the university. <laughs> undergraduate student and valedictorian, Quinn Staley, is leading her fellow students. The class gonfalon was designed by members of the 2018 graduating class. Carolyn Perla, recipient of tonight's Graduate Student Leadership Award, is leading her fellow graduate students in the procession. The alumni now follow the students, led by Mr. James Walsh from the class of 1975. 
Mr. Walsh, the treasurer of the Alumni Association, is carrying the alumni gun floor. Beverly Sherwin Farias, from the class of 1952, is the most senior alumna in attendance today. Each of the alumni participating today is wearing a yellow stole to represent the Alumni Association.
by Ms. Anna Clementi, Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees. Vice Chair Clementi will officially confer the degrees on today's graduates. The platform party includes honored guests, local elected leaders, and senior university administrators. The platform party precedes Dr. Richard Lapidus, the 11th president of Fitchburg State University. Mr. President, honored guests, graduates, faculty and librarians, I hereby convene these commencement exercises marking the completion of the 123rd year of Fitchburg State University and celebrating the achievements of the 122nd graduating class. I am Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Alberto Cardelle, and I welcome you to tonight's celebration. The Fitchburg State University ROTC members will present the colors. I ask that you remain standing. Please join the Fitchburg State University Chamber Choir, directed by Professor Jonathan Harvey and the class of 2018 in the singing of the National Anthem. Oh, say, say, say. 
Please be seated. Mr. President, I am pleased to present Ms. Anna Clementi, Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees. always fix the mic. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the entire campus community, it is my privilege to welcome you to the winter ceremony of our university's 122nd commencement exercises. Tonight's, to tonight's graduates, whether you are completing your undergraduate studies or earning an advanced degree, know that all of us are honored to join you in the celebration. Be assured, that the educational experiences you have received at this university will help you adapt and prosper in your future endeavors. Our university's talented and committed faculty members have broadened your outlook, increased your intellectual curiosity, and encouraged you to explore new ways of learning and growing. I hope you will take this gift of learning and share it with others. The skills you have acquired will help you in your professional and personal lives, and you leave here better equipped to make positive impacts on your communities. Congratulations to each of you. Thank you, Vice Chair Clementi. Mr. President, I am pleased to present State Senator Dean Tran, who brings greetings from the Commonwealth. Thank you, Dr. Cardell. On behalf of my colleagues in the region's legislative delegation and the Massachusetts State Senate, it is my privilege to bring you greetings and congratulations. I know how hard you have worked and the obstacles you have overcome to reach this day. Allow yourself to pause and reflect on what this ceremony symbolizes. Take the time to enjoy your triumph, for soon enough, there will be additional challenges. Let me assure you that those of us in the State House who focus on education know of your importance to the Commonwealth. The simple truth is that you are the Commonwealth's future. Whether you are undergraduates just beginning your professional lives or graduate students advancing in your careers, the alumni of Massachusetts public universities form the backbone of our communities. This state will thrive based on our intellectual capital. We need you, the best and the brightest, working and holding leadership roles in communities throughout the state. Thank you, congratulations again, and best wishes. Thank you, Senator Tran. It is now my pleasure to welcome the Honorable Stephen Di Natale, Mayor of Fitchburg, who brings congratulations on behalf of our host city. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, and on behalf of the entire city of Fitchburg, please allow me to congratulate you on the occasion of your graduation. The milestone you celebrate today is shared by your family, friends, and loved ones. This city is enriched by this university and its people, and all of you have made a positive impact. The city and Fitchburg State University have enjoyed a long and successful partnership and we will continue to explore new opportunities for collaboration that will benefit the campus and the wider region. I hope you will consider using the worth, work ethic and talents you have demonstrated to arrive here tonight in the service of your own communities. As a fellow Fitchburg State graduate, I am proud of this institution, proud of the education I received and proud to look out and see the faces of those 
who will carry on our time-honored tradition. Thank you and best wishes. Thank you, Mayor Di Natale. Mr. President, I am pleased to present Dr. Aruna Krishnamurthy, President of the Fitchburg State University Chapter of the MSCA, who brings best wishes from the faculty and librarians of Fitchburg State University. Thank you, Dr. Cardege. Dear families, well-wishers, students, faculty, and librarians, it is an honor and a privilege for me to represent the faculty and librarians at Fitchburg State and to speak a few words on their behalf. Dear students, a long and significant journey that you began some years ago has come to a fruitful end. We applaud your success in graduating with skills for a new workplace and the breadth of knowledge about the world and its workings. But while this journey with all its highs and lows ends, a new one begins. From the secluded confines of the classroom and campus, you will now step into the variegated world to take on the challenges that confront your generation with gifts that your alma mater has bestowed on you, namely maturity, wisdom, and the knowledge of right from wrong. And not a minute too soon, in recent years, we have witnessed the rise of two grave specters of humanitarian and planetary disasters that haunt us with images of gloom we have seen across the world an unprecedented level of forced human displacement with hapless individuals fleeing violence or simply on a quest for survival. In parallel, we daily receive dire warnings about the unsustainability of our planet with climate change and unregulated human activity. My goal is not to strike a pall of gloom on this happy day, but to remind you that your work is only now beginning. Your teachers and librarians hope that you will take an active part in understanding and alleviating the pain and misery of our fellow human beings scattered across various continents or even just south of the border to whom we are connected by an invisible thread of humanity. We hope that you will not watch from the sidelines but occupy a central role in steering the course of this small planet away from its arrow-marked course to perdition and towards a long and healthy future for generations to come. In the words of the well-known New Englander, Henry David Thoreau, what is the use of a house if you haven't got a tolerable planet to put it on? Dear students, we feel confident that you will do justice to the well-rounded education that you have received at Fitchburg State, which has been an education on values and ethics as much as it has been about skills and know-how. We ask that you continue the spirit of inquiry we have instilled in you, but even more importantly, that you summon up the resolve you will need to act upon your convictions. We are proud of your achievements today, and we hope to be proud of your accomplishments in the coming years as you shape our collective destiny through your actions. And finally, to my faculty and librarian colleagues today, marks the 538th day without a funded contract, in this dismal moment, I offer you my enduring commitment to our collective struggle for justice and equity. All I ask from you is your support and solidarity as we continue our battles into the new year. Thank you, and once more, congratulations to the class of 2018. Thank you, Dr. Krishnamurthy. It is now my pleasure to ask Dr. Nicholas Smith, class of 20, 2011 and president of the Alumni Association to say a few words. Good evening and welcome to all of our honored guests here this evening and especially to those of you seated before me, our future alumni. As president of the Fitchburg State University Alumni Association, I am proud that tonight we will welcome you as our newest members. You will join an elite group of more than 46,000 proud alumni from coast to coast and around the world. These graduates have helped pave the way for you today and provide an incredible networking and support opportunity for you as you transition through your career. We are here for you today 
and will be with you in the future, as you will forever be Fitchburg State Falcons. On behalf of the Alumni Association, I'm also excited to provide you with a small gift. This evening, as you receive your degree from President Lapidus on stage, the photograph that is taken of you will be mailed to you in commemoration of your achievement. We hope that it will serve as a proud reminder of this great accomplishment and will inspire you to stay connected to your alma mater. Congratulations. Thank you, Nicholas. It is now my pleasure to introduce the president of Fitchburg State University, Dr. Richard Lapidus. Thank you and good evening. It's a privilege to be a part of tonight's celebration of student success. This is a milestone in our graduates' lives and an opportunity to observe our institutional traditions. Our processional this evening included alumni representing six decades of Fitchburg State history. I know that there are many alumni in attendance tonight. Some are members of the platform party, some are faculty or staff, and others in the audience as spectators. This time I'd like to invite each of them to please stand and be recognized. Thank you. Also present tonight are members of the university's board of trustees, Anna Clementi, from whom we just heard a few moments ago, Deborah Phillips, Lynn Barrio, David Tiernan, and student trustee Alex Ramos. I'd ask you to please stand and be recognized. We're also joined by state Re representative Stephen Hay. Stephen. Thank you. I would also like to introduce other distinguished members of the platform party. I ask each of them to stand as I read their names. Dr. Laura Bayless, Vice President of Student Affairs. Mr. Jay Bry, Vice President for Finance and Administration. And Ms. Jacqueline Kremer, Dean of the Emilia Gucci Serio Library. Thank you all very much for being here. Those members of the platform party not acknowledged will be introduced later in the program. Many members of the university staff are also gathered tonight, giving their time to make this event special for our students and their families. Please accept my appreciation and gratitude for all of your hard work. How about a round of applause for them, please? I would also like to recognize our distinguished faculty who bring out the very best in our students. I know that it means a lot to our students and to me as well that you're here this evening to celebrate with them and recognize their achievements. If our faculty would please stand and be recognized. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, I'd like to introduce my wife, Lisa. Lisa, I know you love this part. Thank you very much. And now to our graduates. What an evening. This will become one of the most memorable moments of your life, the culmination of many years of hard work. It is the end of one journey, but the beginning of another. While this might be the end of your university life, your education will continue forever, and I know that it will serve you well. Our graduates tonight include students who have completed their studies fully online and for whom this celebration marks their first time on our campus. In addition to several students from Massachusetts, we are also joined by students from New Hampshire, New York, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Oklahoma, and Tennessee. Uh, if you would please stand and be recognized. I know you're here for the first time. Fitchburg is always tropical. <laughs> as each of you reflects back on your experience as a student, I'm sure that you didn't arrive here on your own. 
There were many people who shared your ups and downs along the way. It might have been a special professor who led you through a rough patch or helped you nurture a good idea, or the sacrifices that your parents, family, spouse, or partner made so that you could walk across the stage tonight. So graduates, please join me in thanking each of them for their support with a well-deserved round of applause. As I was thinking more specifically about what I wanted to say to you this evening, I found myself reflecting upon interactions and experiences that I've had with some of you, and I once again reaffirmed how fortunate and proud I am to have the opportunity to serve Fitchburg State University community. We have so many incredible students at this university who every day enrich the campus life of our institution. As presidents, students stop and thank me for supporting something they might be working on or to share a story about how a faculty member or staff member helped them in some way. They tell me that they appreciate me sharing my time with them because it makes them feel important and provides confirmation that they can somehow make a difference. However, I find that students so often tend to view the benefits of our interaction as one directional. But I'm here to tell you that you have it wrong because these student interactions show me that I can make a difference and that every day I can learn valuable lessons from them about academic issues and about life itself. I would like to share with you this evening three of many student stories that celebrate the unyielding spirit of purpose that is our Fitchburg State University student body. Kristen King has service in her blood. Her grandfather served in the U.S. Army and her uncle in the U.S. Air Force. Feeling the call to serve, Kristen enlisted in the Army at the age of 17. The first airplane trip of her life was to go to basic training in South Carolina. Kristen was deployed to Iraq, where she managed property and supplies in the service of the American war effort. After being discharged in 2014, Kristen came back home to Lemonster. She wanted to continue her education and after being so, being so far from home for so long, she decided to stay local and enroll at Fitchburg State. It was a decision that would change several lives for the better. At first, the transition to college life was challenging. The freedom and self-direction of a student was a far cry from the rigid structure experienced by a soldier. Kristen was, al was also several years older than most of her peers in the classroom creating a different sense of distance. But Kristen doesn't give up. She sought out other student veterans on campus and immediately recognized the potential support system that could be fostered. She helped formalize this network by serving as president of the Student Veterans Organization and seeing the creation of a veterans center in Thompson Hall. The center continues to provide a safe and supportive environment for students navigating the same transitions Kristen faced. Kristen balanced her advocacy efforts with a full load of classes in early childhood education and graduates tonight with honors and her sights set on a career in teaching. It was hard work, she said, but it was worth it and we couldn't agree more. Kristen, you embody the highest values of service to your community and to your country. Your contributions to Fitchburg State will endure by supporting student veterans for years to come and your example is an inspiration to all of us. As you embark on your career as a teacher, know that you have already taught the rest of us so very much. Kristen, if you would please stand and be recognized. We wish you the very best. Priyanka Kodka, has sacrificed much in pursuit of her education and given of herself in support of her family and community. A nurse in her native Nepal, Priyanka came to the aid of others after her country was rocked by a devastating earthquake in April of 2015. After that service, Priyanka longed to continue her schooling in the United States so she could support her own family. With their blessing, she left behind her husband and family three years ago to enroll at an American university. 
After facing obstacles at other schools, she found Fitchburg State and enrolled in our Master of Business Administration program to learn about management. On this campus, Priyanka found a supportive community and a home away from home. She said she felt like a newborn baby when she arrived here, adapting to a very different academic culture and struggling at first with her adopted language of English. She had never even seen snow before she arrived at Fitchburg State. But everywhere she turned, she found support in the form of caring professors, compassionate classmates, and helpful university staff. Priyanka is not able to work as a nurse in this country because of her visa restrictions, but she has found a meaningful way to share her skills with others. Tutoring her fellow students, she's been a valuable member of the Tutor Center staff for more than a year, helping Fitchburg State nursing students get through their own challenging courses of study. This noble work is in Priyanka's blood as the daughter and sister of teachers. Priyanka finishes her MBA tonight and looks forward to continuing her education in nursing in the United States. She hopes she can one day be reunited with her husband, who has thus far not been able to join her in this country because of immigration challenges. Priyanka, you represent the promise of the American dream. You have shown the strength to pursue your ambitions and a commitment to your community to help others succeed. We are honored to have you in our Fitchburg State family, and I would ask you to stand, please, and be recognized. Congratulations. Beatrice Kuyigwa is motivated by love for her fellow human beings. In her native Uganda, Beatrice worked with Christian organizations to help hundreds of children whose lives had been disrupted by war. Through her efforts, children received textbooks and scholarships to pursue their education. A deeply spiritual person, Beatrice was called to emigrate to the United States in 1995 to continue doing good works for others. She saw America as the mother of all countries, looking to step in and help wherever there was a problem in the world. America, she said, is a great country with a big heart. Settling in Massachusetts with her husband and daughter, Beatrice found work as a home health aide, caring for the elderly and infirm. In her native Uganda, this work was taken on by all members of the community, so Beatrice was surprised to find that in this country, it was a job unto itself. She decided to make it her career by studying human services here at Fitchburg State. Beatrice took on this work with joy and compassion, delighting in the privilege of engaging people, hearing their stories, and sharing their lives. As a hospice care volunteer, she brings empathy and dignity to people at the end of their life's journey, and she plans to continue this vocation even after she finishes her studies here tonight. When Beatrice arrived in the United States more than 20 years ago, she made a list of goals for herself. On the top of this list was to complete a college degree. Tonight, as a non-traditional student, she crosses that wish off her list. <laughs> Beatrice, your humanity and compassion are an inspiration to all who meet you, and you embody a community vision to which we all should aspire. This time, I'd like to ask you to please stand and be recognized. Beatrice. Congratulations. I chose these stories because I think they exhibit some of the finest human traits that one can possess. I hope that you will remember and think about the traits of determination, resilience, courage, and compassion, as I know that they will, you will need them at various points in your life. Each of you has a dream. Hold on to that dream no matter what critics might say. Don't confuse what is with what can be, as we live in a world with limitless possibilities that often reveals that today's dreamers are the realists of tomorrow. John Lennon once wrote that life is what happens when you're making plans. Sometimes life is not easy, and the unexpected will turn your world upside down. 
There will be points in your life when you encounter disappointment, failure, and loss. There will be times when you're confronted with difficult choices, and the path less traveled is the direction that's calling you. Be resilient and demonstrate courage, because these are the moments that might very well define your character and have a catalytic effect on others that surround you. I encourage you to practice compassion, help understand and show kindness to others. L.A. Vassell, the Nobel laureate, once said, the opposite of love isn't hate, the opposite of love is indifference. Make sure that you make a difference in the lives of others and take care of those who surround you because they often look to you to look out for them. There is no greater satisfaction than knowing that you've helped someone else. There's an old proverb that says, there's a choice that you have to make in everything you do. However, you must always keep in mind that the choices you make ultimately make you. I know that each of you will make good choices. Congratulations, and again, good luck, class of 2018. Thank you. Thank you, President Lapidus. It now gives me great pleasure to honor students who have shown remarkable commitment to their studies here at Fitchburg State University and received high marks for their efforts. Tonight, we have nearly 100 undergraduate students who are graduating with cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude honors. These students are distinguished tonight by wearing ribboned medallions. Please join me in recognizing their hard work. Out of so many exceptional students, only one can be named valedictorian of the 2018 winter commencement. The valedictorian is the student with the highest cumulative grade point average. This year, communications media major Quinn Staley has earned that honor. Quinn Staley sets high expectations for herself. As a communications media major with a concentration in professional communications, she has applied her education by helping her fellow students as a writing tutor. As a scholar, she has performed work that reflected positively on the entirety of this, of this institution. She presented her thesis on the progression of feminist literature from the 19th to the 21st centuries at the University of Massachusetts Undergraduate Research Conference earlier this year and worked as a member of a student team that rebranded our Community Read program and earned strong notices in the National Student Advertising Competition. She has achieved this while also working off-campus jobs. With her self-imposed standards and refusal to accept less than her best effort, Quinn Staley has achieved the distinction of the highest GPA in her graduating class with a perfect 4.0 grade point average. And she has just been hired as marketing content and communications coordinator with an industrial company in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. Quinn, I welcome you to the podium to address your fellow graduates. Hello, I would first like to thank all of the friends, family, and loved ones who are here with us today. We would not be where we are or who we are without all of you, so thank you. As a communications major, it's fairly common to walk at spring graduation if you were doing your internship in the fall like I did. So I walked in May, and I've got to say, it feels a little bit strange to graduate twice. So having been at one graduation already, I know how exciting yet scary the day can be. But being on internship this semester and working full time has given me a little bit of a taste of what post-grad life is like. To those of you just finishing your undergraduate degrees, I know that after you graduate, it's easy to feel scared. Scared that you aren't doing enough, scared that you're letting people down, scared that you're not enough. 
You're suddenly at the bottom of the job market, and with this degree comes a lot of the expectations those others have for you and those you have for yourself. It's easy to think that if things aren't going the way you want them to, that the whole world is turning while you're standing still. Even on my internship, I knew that there was this heavy pressure on me to find my next job, to make my parents proud, and to make myself proud. But whenever I felt this pressure, I thought back to the one story that we covered at MIT Lincoln Laboratory. In 1999, the lab discovered asteroid Bennu, an asteroid that is billions of years old. Bennu is a carbonaceous asteroid, and researchers thought that samples might uncover whether or not life was present at the beginning of the universe. But the satellite to reach Bennu was not developed and launched until 17 years later in 2016. It actually just reached the asteroid a couple of weeks ago. And the satellite won't return with samples from Bennu to answer these long-awaited questions until 2023, almost 24 years later after Bennu was discovered. The point of this story is that some of the world's greatest achievements, the ones that answer life's biggest questions, take a long time to achieve. I'm not saying that it'll take you 24 years to reach your goal. I'm just saying that sometimes the best things come to those who wait. With every science experiment, there are hundreds of tests where things don't work. Hundreds of failures before getting something just perfect. From now on, I hope that you think of every failure as a hurdle instead of a roadblock. I hope you see failure as something you pick yourself up from rather than something that makes you turn back to where you started from. When you leave here today, you are leaving with a piece of paper that represents every single failure and success you encountered here at Fitchburg State University. I hope that you learn to embrace them both, for without these experiences, you would not be the person you are today walking across this stage. You deserve this, you earned this. Congratulations, class of 2018. It is now my great pleasure to present the certificate to Quinn Staley as the 2018 valedictorian. Thank you, Quinn. It is now my privilege to present the Graduate Student Leadership Award. This honor is bestowed in recognition of demonstrated leadership in the student's professional work, graduate studies, or, or disciplinary research, and is presented based on recommendations from faculty and administration. Our honoree tonight is Carolyn Perla from our MBA program. Carolyn Perla is the Assistant Vice President of Retail at IC Credit Union, where her considerable professional duties include oversight of seven branches, facilities, and mail functions, and serving as the credit union's security officer. Carolyn, who completed her first degree at Fitchburg State in 2007, enrolled in our MBA program just over a year, ago, a year and a half ago. To complete her degree, she took two classes each semester, as well as accelerated courses in the university's summer and winter sessions. In her final semester, she also completed an internship. Her professors lauded her enthusiasm for her educational pursuits and her commitment to volunteerism, including service for the past five years on the board of directors of Our Father's House, an agency that houses the homeless and provides a wide range of services to help individuals get back on their feet. Carolyn has accomplished all this while also being committed to her growing family including her three sons between the ages of two and seven. Tonight, she completes her second Fitchburg State degree, an MBA with a concentration in management. I would like to welcome and invite Carolyn to the podium to share a few words. Carolyn. Wow, what a great celebration tonight. Thank you, Dr. Cardell, for the kind introduction. President Lupitas, for your continued leadership, not only here at the university, but out in the community. You are a true inspiration. To all of our honored guests tonight and all my fellow graduates, most importantly, we did it. What a great feeling to be here tonight, knowing that all of that hard work, time, and commitment has paid off as we all walk across the stage tonight 
I'm honoured to share this special moment with you and to represent my fellow graduate students. Thank you to my family, my husband Patrick, for your support in picking up the slack at home so I could be here tonight. To my children, Romeo, Teddy, Cyrus, thank you for being such amazing kids who inspire me and make me laugh every day. I could not be any prouder of all of you. I love you. <laughs> to my parents, brothers, the rest of my family and friends, thank you for your support and patience throughout the years. I would not be the person I am today without all of you. To my coworkers and team members for your continued support and inspiration. And I have to give Ashley a shout out because you're out in the audience today. You should be very proud of yourself. Professor Joe McAloon, you run an amazing MBA program and thank you for being a supportive advisor and educator. This program far exceeded my expectations. The knowledge and friendships that I have gained will stay with me forever. Thank you to all of you who have shared this journey with me. In undergrads, if you're looking to keep going, I could not recommend a better program. I started the MBA program last fall, and getting a master's degree has been something I've wanted to accomplish since I walked this stage back in 2007. However, after graduation, I started my career, got married, had kids, and as time went on, I had plenty of excuses to why I never went back. Finally, I said it's time to just do this. No more excuses, make the commitment and go back. As you can all imagine, being out of school for 10 years, I was not only filled with excitement, but lots of anxiety. Between work, family, and community obligations, how was I going to do this too? That anxiety quickly turned into only excitement as I entered that first class and realized not only how much I could bring to the table, but also what my professors and fellow classmates brought. I looked forward to seeing everyone, listening to different thoughts and perspectives on various topics and realized how lucky I was to have the opportunity to continue my education. There are so many people in our communities that struggle every day. Working multiple jobs and endless days to put food on the table to provide for their families. Individuals struggling with addiction, sickness, loss, and heartache. It made me realize all the burdens I had used as excuses for not going back sooner were actually blessings. I'm very fortunate to have my health, an amazing support system, and the capabilities to make a goal of mine a reality. I'm often asked, how do you do it all? And I never know how to respond. I usually just shrug my shoulders, smile, and respond, I don't know, I just do it. Something I've learned through this experience is that I am so fortunate to be able to just do it, and I cherish the compliment of being viewed as someone people look up to, as a strong woman, leader, coworker, friend, sister, daughter, wife, and most importantly, mother. Like me, all of you here tonight, you did it too. You are going to do so many amazing things in your lives. You are also someone to look up to, someone who inspires and makes positive changes in others. It isn't about how big or small the gesture, it's about just doing it. And it starts with your actions, how you listen to others, treat others with respect, especially when you don't agree, being compassionate and realizing that we all make a difference in this world even with the simplest gestures that get no recognition. And often we don't even realize the impact we have made in someone else's life. Continue to make positive changes out in the community, get involved and give back somehow. And most importantly, always show kindness. It really is the key to change. As Mother Teresa once said, we shall never know all the good that a simple smile can do. Thank you all and enjoy this, accompl this accomplishment you have made and I wish you all the best in your future. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. It is now our great pleasure to present the Graduate Student Leadership Award to Carolyn Perla. Innovata Brass will now perform variations on a theme of Haydn while we prepare for the awarding of the degrees.
Will the candidates for graduate degrees please come forward? I would like to ask that Vice Chair Anna Clemente of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Catherine Canney, Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs, please join me for the conferring of graduate degrees. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, I present to you these persons whom I know to be sufficient in knowledge according to the customs of the ancient and revered universities for the degrees of Certificate of Advanced Graduate Study, Master of Arts, Master of Arts in Teaching, Master of Business Administration, Master of Education, and Master of Science. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Higher Education of Massachusetts and the Fitchburg State University Board of Trustees, I am pleased to grant these candidates their certificates or degrees with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. Would the chairpersons for each graduate program please present the candidates for the following degrees. The Certificate of Advanced Graduate Study, the degrees of Master of Arts, the Master of Arts in Teaching, the Master of Business Administration, the Master of Education, and the Master of Science. I ask that Dr. Becky Copper Glenz, Dean of Grad and Continuing Ed, Dr. Franca Baricelli, Dean of Arts and Science, Dr. Keith Williamson, Dean of Business and Technology, Dr. Bruno Hicks, Dean of Education, and Dr. John Schamlaufel, Dean of Health and Natural Sciences, prepare the candidates with their hoods so they may be presented to President Lapidus and receive their degrees. Division of Arts and Sciences, hooding by Deans Baricelli and Copper Glens. Master of Arts degree in History, led by Dr. Daniel Serfield. Eric Matthew Iben. Carrie Ann Michelle Lissard. <laughs> Master of Arts in Teaching Degree in History, led by Dr. Daniel Serfield. <laughs> Justin C. Murray. Master of Education degree in Arts Education, led by Dr. Mr. Petri Flint. <laughs> Michael J. Seguin. <laughs> Master of Science degree in Applied Communication, led by Dr. Vera Lorenkova. Jeremy Paul Dusso. <laughs> Master of Science degree in Criminal Justice, led by Dr. David Weiss. <laughs> Jamie Sandra Parker. <laughs> Morgan Rayanne Steele. Division of Business and Technology, puddings by Deans Williamson and Copper Glens. Master of Business Administration degree in Business Administration, led by Mr. Joseph McAloon. Salman Abdullahi. Kennedy Aluafem. <laughs> Eric Aju Zioku. <laughs> Anna Marie Melissa Aline Laval.
Nordine Arwi. Yafo Sua Ba. Kristen Ann Beering. Ada Yvette Bono. Kalia S. Cox. Taisha Diaz. Adam Craig Denwitty. Miriam Dorcas Coates Dixon. Shane Donnelly. Beryl A. Fomundum. Santosh Hamal. Taulant Hoxha. Aniatia Ijama. Andrew Eric Johnson. Priyanka Karla, Karka. Scott David McGuire. Rashid Mahmood. <laughs> Carissa Marie Mahoney. Hector D. Martinez Rivera. (laughs) 
James Edward McCarthy. Sean Edward Morales. Sharon Grace Mwathi. Trisha Judith Howard Myers. <laughs> Jeffrey David Nardone. Victoria Lorraine Pantano. <laughs> Carolyn Joy Perla. <laughs> Benjamin Paul Moore Porter. Zachary W. Presto. Jerry Charles Rogers. Samantha Ann Seidel. Eman <laughs> Shaheen. Marie Sheehan. Adam Joseph Solkis. Topier Jr. Annie Doreen Tete. Romeo Tete. <laughs> Shannon and Tormi. Valentine Ume.
Vidya Tanya Uran. Russell W. Webb. Donnell Williams, Jr. Audrey Bailey Wilson. Xiaofeng Wu. Teresa Yang. Sadie Jo Zipkowski. Robert E. Zola. Master of Education degree in Occupational Education, led by Dr. James Alicata. Douglas Richard Becker. Monique Marie Maskell. Master of Science degree in Computer Science, led by Dr. Kevin Austin. Radha Kumari Sharma. Division of Education, putting by Dean Hicks and Copper Glens. Certificate of Advanced to Graduate Study Degree in Educational Leadership Management, led by Dr. Philip Sisa. Sarah Page Butters. Catherine Emba Jingris. Master of Education degree in Curriculum and Teaching, led by Mr. Richard Maschiarelli. <laughs> Leanne Marie Arthur. <laughs> Kristen Lee Bassford. Geraldine Comer. <laughs> Nathania Demosthenes.
Jennifer Erin Graham. Josie Ann Guarino. Claire Hassler. Yeah. No, it's fine. <laughs> Maria Antonietta Lees. Jared Ryan Lucier. Emma Brooke Mason. Marianne Mestre Price. <laughs> Abigail Jean Nunez. Thomas S. Petty. Christina Jean Sullivan. Scott M. Tessier. <laughs> Lindsay Marie Puale Wuha Troy. Bartolomeus Adrianus Van Luling Jr. Susan Marie Wilson. Master of Education degree in Early Childhood Education, led by Dr. Lindsay Ben Harris. Fiona Mary Delaney. Brittany Michelle Evans. <laughs> Bita Riley. Master of Education degree in Educational Leadership and Management, led by Dr. Philip Sisa. <laughs> Catherine Pratt. <laughs> Ma
Master of Education degree in Elementary Education, led by Dr. Annette Sullivan. Heather L. Dancos. <laughs> Dustin A. Delacchia. Master of Education degree in Special Education, led by Dr. Nancy Murray and Dr. Ruth Joseph. <laughs> Catherine Elaine Allen. <laughs> Sharon Ayandi. Carolyn Grace Beaumier. <laughs> Catherine Mary Bro. Sarah Cynthia Burke. <laughs> Megan Oscarco Chase. <laughs> Ulyssa Rose Desolates. Anastasia Irene Dilling. <laughs> Sarah Elizabeth Doyle. Catherine Exilda Marie Ellis. <laughs> Elaine F. Fournier. Stephanie May Jagir. <laughs> Jessica Michelle Joyce. Catherine A. Mahoney. <laughs> Brianna Elizabeth McBee. And McCann. <laughs> Catherine M. Maher. Lauren Ashley Mola.
Kathleen Ann Murphy. Glenn Scott Chaplin. Lindsay Olivia Tate. Felicia Ann Weaver. Division of Health and Natural Sciences, hooding by Deans Shamlawful and Copper Glens. Master of Arts in Teaching Biology, led by Dr. Lisa Grimm. Got it. Robert Edward D'Alessandro. <laughs> Master of Science degree in Forensic Nursing, led by Dr. Deborah Stone. Christine Marie Perry. Tyra M. Sweet. <laughs> Vice Chair Anna Clemente and Dr. Kathy Candy, please join me at the podium. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, I present to you these persons whom I know to be sufficient in knowledge according to the customs of the ancient and revered universities for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science in Education, and Bachelor of Science. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Higher Education of Massachusetts and the Fitchburg State University Board of Trustees, I am pleased to grant these candidates their degrees with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. Will the chairpersons for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science in Education, and Bachelor of Science please present their candidates to President Lapidus so that they may receive their degrees. Division of Arts and Sciences, Dean Baricelli, please receive your graduates. Bachelor of Arts degree in English Studies, led by Dr. Lisa Gim. Stephanie Lynn Munoz. <laughs> Bachelor of Science degree in Communications Media, led by Miss Mary Baker. Brad William Allen. <laughs> Melissa Ann Bonenfant. John H. Crowley. Rayanne Mullet.
Matthew Joseph Ruel. Brian Adley Saul. Quinn Elizabeth Staley. Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice, led by Dr. David Weiss. Joshua Douglas Levi Bosworth. William Thomas Cooney. Riley Lynn Grinkus. William Robert Hooksema. Nathan P. Holly. Sean Stephen Mackey. Rebecca Bebe Mondesir. Daniel J. Neal. Andy Sovan Wren. Our next graduate was commissioned earlier this week as second lieutenant in the United States Army. Benjamin and Desner Rogers. Perry J. Russo. Patrick R. Spooner. Chantel M. Stewart. Bachelor of Science degree in Economics, led by Dr. Ozge Ozai. Mackenzie E. Gray. Bachelor of Science degree in English Studies, led by Dr. Lisa Gim. Samantha Linnea Bogert. Hannah Mariah Britton. James E. Burdick III. William Aaron Canterbury. Martin Joseph Daly. Ashley Marie Donahue. Trevor Christian Murphy. Bachelor of Science degree in Game Design, led by Miss Mary Baker. Daniel A. Cooper. Michael John DeFranza. Bachelor of Science degree in History, led by Dr. Joseph Wachtel. 
Jeffrey E. Hines. Duncan Anthony Martinez. Bachelor of Science degree in Human Services, led by Dr. Christine Shane. Brittany Ann Bickford. Rachel Logan Bowmill. Stephanie Jane Gerard. Kara Hannigan. <laughs> Beatrice M. Caigua. Carly Victoria Marshall. Julia Irene Smith. John Charles Waterman. Bachelor of Science degree in Interdisciplinary Studies, led by Mr. Petri Flint. Samantha Nicole Boudreaux. Jonathan Matthew Butler. Thomas A. Carey. <laughs> Ashley H. Crank. <laughs> Chelsea M. Gentilly. Courtney Elizabeth Hastings. <laughs> Gary Intirat. <laughs> Kelsey Lee Jordan. Erica Marie Knoll. Jamalet Raz Lopez. Alexander Lynch Melberg. Nicholas Richard Rao. <laughs> Alexandra Rodriguez. <laughs> Michaela Jean Verrier. Heather J. Williams. <laughs> Bachelor of Science degree in Political Science, led by Dr. Joshua Spiro. <laughs> Kelly A. Johnson. Jasmine Lisa Pazella. <laughs> Bachelor.
Bachelor of Science degree in Sociology, led by Dr. Christine Shane. Caitlin Jensen. Alec Eric Von Wagner. Division of Business and Technology, Dean Williamson, please receive your graduates. Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration, led by Dr. Renee Scaparone. Mackenzie Vincent Cashin. Bryant J. Cooper. Brittany A. Ferreira. Nancy Goma. Lebis Gonzalez. <laughs> Molly Matilda Kane. <laughs> Sean Taylor Keller. <laughs> Christian. Patrick LaRoche. <laughs> Timothy P. Luxa. <laughs> Joshua Everett Page. Esmelen Romello. <laughs> Kyle Oliveira Schwartz. <laughs> Marvin T. Sylvain. Lucas Philip Tierney. <laughs> Dylan Andrew Woods. <laughs> Joseph Michael Woods. Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Information Systems, led by Dr. Fritz Lander. Derek A. Darko. Kwampet L. Nanthawang. Bachelor of Science degree in Industrial Technology, led by Dr. Sanjay Kahl. <laughs> Stephen Joseph Ellis. <laughs> Michael Kelly Fossa. Adam James Jakes. John J. Murin. Alexander Piankov. Derek P. Sloan. Christian A. Vogel.
Craig D. Wilder. Bachelor of Science degree in Occupational Vocational Education, led by Dr. James Alicata. Corey Paul Barassa. Todd Darren Shalupka. Amanda Lee Doherty. How Win. Division of Education, Dean Hicks, please receive your graduates. Bachelor of Science in Education degree in Early Childhood Education, led by Dr. Denise LaFrance. Brigitte Alinskas. Erin Marie Healy. Kristen Laura King. Nizabeth Vega. Bachelor of Science in Education, degree in Elementary Education. Gabriela N. Brodeur. Jacqueline Elizabeth White. Bachelor of Science in Education, degree in Middle School Education. Kristen E. Swartz. Bachelor of Science in Education, degree in Special Education. Lauren Ann McDonald. Division of Health and Natural Sciences, Dean Shamlafo, please receive your graduates. Bachelor of Arts degree in Biology, led by Dr. Mel Govinden. Trevor Anthony Hodge. Bachelor of Science degree in Biology. Joseph Allen Arsenal. Jason A. Bell. Sarah Kathleen Bennett. Jessica Lindsay Galvin. Joshua David Gentilella. Gregory Charles Gundberg. Carlos Jose Rivera Morera. Daniel N. Mokundi. Pamela Opong. Nathan Bernard Paquette. (laughs) 
Evan Asil Pierce. Reginald Opoku Sarpong. Taylor Whitney Skinner. Raquel M. Tabalas. Bachelor of Science degree in Chemistry, led by Dr. Matangi Krishnamurtha. David Robert Nunes. <laughs> Bachelor of Science degree in Environmental and Earth Science, led by Dr. Elizabeth Gordon. Calvin Nguyen. <laughs> Bachelor of Science degree in Exercise and Sports Science, led by Dr. Danielle Wigmore. <laughs> Anne Christine Claude. <laughs> Jonathan Peter Mangini. David James Pearson. <laughs> Bachelor of Science degree in Mathematics, led by Dr. Jennifer Berg. <laughs> Tyler James Chellis. <laughs> Melissa Marie Rayom. Bachelor of Science degree in Nursing, led by Dr. Nancy Dufilly. <laughs> Olivia Ann Colette. <laughs> Camilla Victoria Perlas de Leon. Chelsea Lee Gagney. <laughs> Bachelor of Science degree in Psychological Science, led by Dr. Tom Schilling. Kimberly A. Calandrella. <laughs> Ryan J. Kelly. <laughs> Sophina Ann Etienne. Edward Chege Kabunyi. <laughs> Rebecca Lee. <laughs> Angel Marie McAvoy. Nicole Elizabeth Rossi. Jenny Marie Sheridan. Jasmine Welch.
This concludes the conferring of degrees. Please rise and join Fitchburg State University Chamber Choir in the singing of our alma mater in Old Wachusett's shadow. Please be seated. <clears throat> Tonight we have honored undergraduate and graduate degree recipients, each worthy of their own round of applause. First, I would like to ask our undergraduate degree recipients to please stand. In academic tradition, the student who has not yet earned a degree wears the tassel on the mortar board on the right side. When the degree is conferred, the scholar moves the tassel to the left side and joins select company. In recognition of your new status, will each graduate please move their tassel to the left? Congratulations. Please be seated. And now to the degree, to graduate degree recipients, if you would please stand. Each of you has worked hard to advance your understanding of your chosen disciplines and move on tonight ready to be improved practitioners in your fields. And we look forward to hearing of your accomplishments. Let's give our graduate students a round of applause, please. If I could get all of our graduate students to stand up one more time, all of our graduates. How about a round of applause for the class of 2018? I think we can do better than that, class of 2018. There we go. You're up, Alberto. <laughs> you may be seated. <laughs> Let me express our deepest gratitude and appreciation to you, the graduates, for allowing Fitchburg State to be such an important part of your academic and intellectual growth. We have now reached the conclusion of our ceremony. The platform party will recess, and we ask faculty and librarian students, alumni, and guests to remain at your seats until they have departed. I now declare the winter commencement ceremony in the 123rd year of Fitchburg State University closed. Thank you.
Thank you. 